Drag and drop sorting activities are a great way to evaluate your learner's ability to identify items by dragging them to different drop targets. And one of the most common versions of this activity is designed around whether items should be, say, kept or discarded. So let's look at a couple examples before we uh, build a simple one here. So let's jump into here. Right, so in this example, we're asking the learner to identify permissible objects, you know, which objects are permissible in the workplace and which ones aren't. Uh, you know, tea, coffee or tea is probably permissible. Uh, knives and things like that probably are not. Uh, plants, sure, we want to see plants. Your family, great, show us your family. Uh, family, right? A radio, this is a good one, not really sure. Depends on your workplace. Let's say it is uh, not permissible because it doesn't seem like it has a headphone, but uh, just a guess. Candles are probably not permissible. Uh, let's try it, see what we did it right. A knife in the candle, but everything else. So in this case, it's telling me that um, I could have put the radio on the desk. So I guess I uh, was a little bit too strict there. All right, so meeting items in this example, right? Uh, optional versus required items. So you can just drag each one in and place them here on the drop targets. And then of course, whatever they are, you can you know check your answer. And then finally, you don't have to have two targets, right? In this case, you just have necessary items and you have a single item, right? So what are you going to put in here prior to uh, your review with a meeting with an employee, any awards, uh, feedback from others, job description, not sure you need insurance information. And there we go. So a couple different examples and ways that we can look at sorting activities uh, with drag and drop. All right, and so we just looked at those examples and let's build this example real quick and take a look at some of the options we have in Storyline for uh, building drag and drop interactions. So let's go ahead and start here. In this example, I have just my uh, two graphics here for a drop target, two drop targets, one that we want to trash and then one that we want to keep. And they're just PNG images down here, you can see in the timeline. And then I do have this single graphic right here, just a rectangle with some text. So a couple things here, I'll just make a couple of these. We don't have to build the full thing out. We want to identify some notes to a trash and then some notes to file. So I'm going to duplicate this one. You can see it's called uh, down here in the timeline, drag 01. Well, let's just hold the control key down, click and drag, and we'll call this one note two. And I will update it here as drag 02. Again, keeping these comic common prefixes makes it really easy to identify from uh, the trigger panel or from the form view panel, which we'll see when we convert this to an interaction. But really like to keep these uh, set up in that way. And drag one, I'll make two more of these. So note three. And then, ah, didn't get it. There we go. Got it. Four. So we'll call this one drag four. And then the other one will be drag oh, three. Okay, so I've got two of them. Let's say we'll make the odd number ones go into the trash can, and then we'll make the even ones, we'll say, go into the keep it. So it doesn't really matter. At this point, I've got my interaction here. It's a fully custom interaction in that I've designed everything with a slide. I haven't had any constraints of a form or any other type of template, right? I can move these around. I can do a lot of different things with them. What I want to do now is convert it to a freeform interaction, and I'll choose the drag and drop. So I come up here to slot, uh, insert, and the second option right here, convert to freeform. And then you can see that we have six different types of freeform questions. The one I'm interested in here is the drag and drop. So I'll leave that selected and then just click OK. So it's not going to change anything on my slide, but it is going to automatically, Storyline is going to automatically take me to form view. And I mean by form view over here on the right side, you can see we have this form view tab. By default, we're always working in slide view, which is just that blank slide approach where you customize and move and arrange and design everything the way you want. Form view is where we're going to wire up the choices. So we're not going to interfere or, or affect our design layout, but it's here that we can choose which items are draggable and which items are the drop targets. And we do that over here in the form. So here's where I want to select my first item, my drag item. So let's say drag 01, which is the note. And we said, what, the odd numbers will go into the trash. So my drop target will be uh, drop 01 trash. And then I'm looking for drag 02, which will go into drop 02. And then drag 03 into drop 01. And of course, you know, if I had something else, different position, way I want to manage this, that's fine. 
but I thought even and odd, that kind of makes it easy to work with here. So number four is an even file cabinet. So this is the correct choices. If I pop back over here to slide view, you'll see that everything still looks the same. I can swap these graphics out with different icons. Everything can still be modified, but I essentially have my interaction. And also check this out, right? So down here in the bottom in the slide layers, I've automatically got two layers that were created for correct and incorrect. And that happened because when we converted it to the free form, by default, Storyline thinks that you want to treat it like a quiz. So if I didn't, I could totally change that as well in my options. But let's just preview the file real quick and see how this works. All right, so everything is where it is. And automatically, these are draggable objects now. I can put them anywhere I want, right? And just, I don't think I got this correct. I'll click Submit, and there's my uh, feedback. So here's some options that we have that are really cool in Storyline, and I think sometimes they get, uh, they're missed by users because the drag and drop functionality by itself is already so cool. One of the things we can do is we can actually give some visual feedback to the learners to indicate that they drop the item in a correct or incorrect target before they click submit. So let me show you in this final example what I'm talking about. So really the same interaction, but this one's just been uh, fleshed out. If I drop it on here, notice how immediately I get the change of color here to indicate that either I drop this on a correct or incorrect. So right now it's telling me, I haven't even clicked submit yet, but it is telling me that this note right here does not belong in the file cabinet. It belongs here on in the trash. So if I go through each one, I'm getting that feedback right uh, immediately without having to uh, wait to submit it, right? So if that one's green, it belongs there. That one's green, green, and that's probably red. So just a way to kind of lead the uh, learner to a better choice, right? I'm still not scoring it. I haven't submitted the interaction yet, but I am providing them some visual feedback indicating that, hey, uh, what you're doing, you're on the right track or uh, you're not on the right track, and you may want to think about that again. So if we come back down here to our example, here's what this looks like. So note one, I want to select it. Then I want to come down here in the states, tab, which is in the timeline, next to the timeline, and I want to add two new states to this. So we do that by clicking first the Edit States button, and we'll create a new state. And under here in the dropdown, you'll see that at the very bottom, we have some built-in states here. So we have the drag over, which we're not using here. In this case, we want to show a drop correct state. And right now it duplicates the first one, right? But if I come up here to Format tab, and let's fill it with the green. That's good for drop correct. And then we'll add one more for the drop incorrect, right? So, okay. And it should duplicate the normal state by default. And we'll change that to red, just to indicate that, nope, not a good choice. Colors look like they're fine. Obviously, I could put some icons in here and, and you know, further design these. But this, the colors is going to be enough just for us what we're doing now. Click Done Editing. All right, cool. But I still need to add the states for the other three notes. And I don't really want to lose a lot of time manually doing it. So I can select the one that I just worked on. Come up here to the Home tab. Double click Format Painter. We're going to double click it because we want to keep the, the, this tool persistent. And now I can just paint those states to these other objects. Super cool, super fast, really efficient. Now I've got this. I can just press escape to get rid of that tool. Now I have to do one other thing here before this is going to work correctly. And I need to go back into form view. So come over here over above the triggers panel, form view. And I need to change the options. So drag and drop options. And this is really worth familiarizing yourselves with because there's a lot of cool things we can do in here. And you a lot of times may not even open this up and you still have a pretty cool drag and drop interaction. But uh, there's even more we can do with it. So take a look at this. By default, down here in the bottom, this option is selected. And it's telling Storyline to delay the item drop states until we've clicked the Submit button. But what we want to have happen here is we want to actually not delay those. We want that immediate visual feedback. So as soon as we drop one of those, tar those, those uh, items on a drop target, we want to see those states change. Click OK. Preview the file. So everything should look the same. Let's say if I take note one and put this on an even, there's that visual feedback. 
and I could move it over here to the other one. And then of course you see how these snap into place, right? Maybe you don't want that. We can come in here and again open up our drag and drop options and we can choose to stack random. We can have them free, which means they just have to touch any part of the target, stack to center, tile, uh, and so on. So there's some options here for how these would work. I think what we have for stacking random is fine, but you know, free is just going to make it look a little bit more like a free form interaction. Just have to make sure that part of that, dra that, that, that drag item is touching, right? Just a piece of it. So as long as it's touching part of that target, uh, you should see um, it's working just fine. So a couple easy ways in Storyline to create sorting activities as well as customize those sorting activities uh, using Storyline's built-in drag and drop options for uh, giving that visual feedback.